welcome to Zach DTV, the place for interesting news from around the net. In today's episode, we are going to look at a pretty creepy looking uh, biped robot. We also have a new muscle that will help make our robot stronger. And finally, we're going to look at a new robot from researchers at Disney. Remember, if you want more interesting news like this, seven days a week, click the subscribe button over here so you know when I upload something new. All right, let's get into this. A team of researchers from Agility Robotics, this is an offshoot of Oregon State University, have developed Cassie. As you can see, Cassie is a creepy little thing about half the size of a human being. This robot is self-contained, and you know what? It's even waterproof. Cassie has proven herself on dirt, grass, a wobbly dock near water, and even takes steps. Our world was built for people moving on two legs. We have stairs, curbs, all these kind of things that actually hinder the ability of a wheeled or tracked bot to move around. But these obstacles don't provide a challenge to Cassie. They're developing this bot for a future in search and rescue, disaster relief, and even delivery. That's right, in a time not too far from now, you might have a Cassie robot walking up the street to deliver your pizzas. And while this robot's not ready to go into production yet, these videos are of what the team was able to accomplish in less than a year. So they are making great strides with this robot, and I have no doubt that before too long, we will see this available for purchase. Next, let's look at this soft muscle that engineers from Columbia University came up. They created this by 3D printing silicone infused with micro bubbles of ethanol. This allows them to cause expansion and contraction through the use of heat. They run a single thin wire through the muscle itself and power it with eight volts of current. At 80 degrees Celsius, this muscle can expand to 900 times its original size. Part of the beauty here is being as such as 3D printed, you can make them to any shape and size needed for your application. They're durable and they're cheap to manufacture. This is a major leap forward in soft robotics because it overcomes the issue on how to make them move. As of now, most of our soft robotics are moved either hydraulically or pneumatically, which causes major issues if there's ever a puncture or tear in the material used. Well, with this design, even with a tear, it will still be able to operate, much like a human muscle. And according to Aslan Miryev, he's one of the researchers on this project, it can push, pull, bend, twist, and lift weight. It's the closest artificial material equivalent we have to a natural muscle. Now this example is only a prototype and they are working to refine this even further. In their next example, they should be able to add conductive materials to the mix so that way they don't even have to run a wire into it. They also state that they're planning to merge this with an AI system, so that way they can teach it to respond to outside stimulus automatically. I'll tell you what, to me this is a great advance, and I am sure our robot overlords will be using this kind of muscle when they take over the world. So now we've looked at biped robots, and we've looked at muscles to make our future overlords move. Let's look at this creepy sucker that came from Disney. This is SnapBot. They call it this because it has the ability to lose or gain legs as necessary or as damaged. It will change its style of locomotion depending on how many appendages it has. That's right, this creepy thing will just keep coming. The body of the SnapBot is where it houses all of its batteries and its microcontrollers, that, that stuff it needs for untethered operation. At the magnetic connection points for the legs, this bot has a multi-pin spring-loaded connector that allows the legs to communicate with the bot. So that way the bot knows how many appendages it has at a time. Like I said, you remove a leg, it won't rely on it because it knows it's no longer there. And it can adjust its gait to compensate. You add a leg, it can be more efficient and use the extra appendage for locomotion to save a little bit of power and get over obstacles easier. While I'm sure this was developed for use in their rides, I could picture something like, you know, you're shooting at a space spider and blowing legs off it or something like that. This could also have great real world applications as well. Something to the effect of allowing a damaged robot to reconfigure or make our future robot overlords unstoppable. E. Well, what do you think? Which one of these technologies is going to do the most damage to human life on the planet Earth? Or let's just go with which one's the coolest to you. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. It'll really help my channel grow. I do this five days a week with a live stream on Saturday and a short on Sunday. So I hope to see you here again. Until next time, have fun and be safe.